girl in up on basketball court when we want to play. Hey, this is spectator sport. I don't mind being a spectator. You know, Malcolm, if you were more mature like me and Reggie, when it comes to women, you might be more than a spectator. Yeah, you gotta learn how to respect the friendship value of a woman. Reg, the last thing I want to hear from a woman is, let's be friends. <laughs> friendship is just a polite way of saying, get your hand off that. <laughs> cool times, y'all want to play? No, nah, I gotta go to work, maybe tomorrow. I guess I get a jump on my homework. Don't you have homework? Me? Nah, I knocked mine off in study hall. I thought you were talking to that girl, Darlene. I was, but when she told me she just wanted to be friends, <laughs> I figured, why waste the entire period? <laughs> yeah, you're right, Malcolm. Anyway, it gets a lot easier the second and third time you take those courses. <laughs> hey, Sharon. Hi, Malcolm. Getting out of school kind of late, aren't you? I had a French club meeting. Oh, I didn't know you were taking French. I took French in the ninth grade, too. Oh, parlez-vous français? No, that's probably why I got a D in it. <laughs> You're real smart, though. You must get A's and B's in French. I get A's and B's in everything. How about algebra? A's. Huh. Sit down, Sharon. Sure. <laughs> what do you want to drink? Uh, I wouldn't mind the hot chocolate. Hey, Linda, two hot chocolates. Okay, Malcolm, you're spending money. You must want something. I don't want anything. I'm here to do you a favor. I'm listening. Okay. How much do you make babysit? Well, I get two fifty an hour when I take care of the Thompson's kids. I'll pay you four bucks an hour. I won't throw up on you, and I won't try to poke your eye out with a Lego. <laughs> Just what am I supposed to be doing for this four dollars an hour? Absolutely nothing. That's the beauty of this offer. All you have to do is hang out with me. And every once in a while, we can talk about math. <laughs> You want me to tutor you? Mm, I didn't say that. I don't need a tutor. This is just gonna be like sharing our thoughts on how to get me a better grade. But aren't you taking calculus by now? Mm, algebra too. Laugh at me and you die. I don't know if I can, Malcolm. I mean, I'm only in Algebra 1. Yeah, but you're real smart. Doug's been griping about that since you were in the first grade. Here, you can read my textbook, figure this stuff out, and explain it to me. Come on, Sharon. You owe me this. How do you figure that? When you were five, Doug told me to set you on fire. <laughs> well, I could use the money. Okay, Malcolm, give me your textbook and I'll start reading it tonight. Thanks, Sharon. Great. This is great. Sit down. What? Uh, I really appreciate it if you wouldn't say anything to Doug or Reggie about this. I mean, they don't need to know I need a tutor. You don't need a tutor. You just need an absolutely beautiful A student to hang with. And I just happen to be available. I won't tell anybody, Malcolm. I promise. Yo, Sharon! Sharon! Come to the window! I know you're up there, girl. I got eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> Who did that? think it's like being dead? Oh, it's terrible, man. You go to this one place and you're there all the time and you do absolutely nothing. <laughs> I 
<laughs> You're lucky to be alive. Yeah. Yo, Doug, we got a problem and we need to talk. Now, it's about your sister, man. Oh, it's always about my sister. You've been dogging her steps every day for a year. Give it up, shorty. <laughs> Yeah, Kwanzi, Sharon doesn't want to have anything to do with you. She wants to hang around guys her own age. No, she doesn't. Kwanzi, say what you came to say and get out of here. All right. What would you say if I told you something was going on between Sharon and Malcolm? <laughs> If we put a dipstick in your brain, it'd come up a quart low. <laughs> come on, laugh it up, Chuckle Bus. May you be interested to know she's over at Malcolm's place right now. How do you know? Because I saw her go inside his building in an hour. Well, she's probably babysitting those two little Thompson brats. They live in that building, too, you know. Word on the street is that she and Malcolm were having a cozy little talk over hot chocolate a few days ago. I just thought I'd check out the room before I killed myself. <laughs> Uh, Malcolm is probably down at school playing basketball or something. Well, I feel like I'm sort of getting it. I just wish algebra didn't have so many X's and Y's to confuse me. Why can't they just use numbers? If they just use numbers, it wouldn't be algebra. Okay. <laughs> Sit down, Malcolm. Now, forget about the X's and Y's. They're just in the equation to hold the place until you can figure out what the number represents. Blank stare. <laughs> Okay, pretend X and Y don't represent numbers. Pretend they represent people. Now, your job, algebraically speaking, is to figure out who these people are. Oh, I just hate this. <laughs> okay, here's an equation using people instead of numbers. Now, John Dinwiddie tells me he really likes me and he doesn't want to go out with any other girls. But yesterday, when he came to walk me to school, I could smell perfume on that scuzzy little liar. <laughs> Ooh, it's a mistake a lot of us have made. <laughs> Any chance it was your perfume? Nope. I can't afford the good stuff. This was obviously a tramp with money. <laughs> so, X equals tramp? Exactly. Now I have to try to work out an equation to find out who X is. That's easy. Apparently, so is X. <laughs> Look, he already smelled like perfume when he walked you to school yesterday. So, X must have gone to his house early in the morning. So? So, we know that John Dinwiddie's mother must have seen X slinking around her son before school. So? So, you just show up at John's house when he's not home. And you say, Miss Dinwiddie, my best girlfriend in the world thinks she left her earrings here yesterday. And then Miss Dinwiddie says, uh-uh, Sharon. X had on her earrings when she left here. <laughs> and then you know who X is. That's a good idea, Malcolm. And just like algebra, you try to find the shortest equation to find the unknown. You know, Malcolm, if it don't make you feel any better, Albert Einstein flunked math. You got a Jewish kid in your class? <laughs> I don't understand how I have two children and I'm setting the tables myself. This is good practice for you, James, for when they've grown up and moved out. They're never going to move out. I read in a magazine, children today aren't moving out until they're well into their 40s. They're starving. What's for dinner? Wait. I'm in my 40s. I could move out. Are your hands washed? No, so I'll only eat the dirty food. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Sharon, you're later than usual. I was getting worried. I was getting hopeful. <laughs> Where were you? Well, I am vice president of the French club, and they kind of like me to go to the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing. Uh, Sharon, could I speak to you in the living room for a second, please? Oh. <laughs> you weren't at any French club meeting. Where was I? You were with Malcolm. <laughs> Doug, is your life so empty that you have nothing else to do but spy on me? Number one, I'm asking the questions here. <laughs> Number two, my life is not empty. My life is full of wonders and joys. Get to the point or you're going to miss F Troop.
The point is, what were you doing with Malcolm? None of your business. None, 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 of, my, none of my business? You're my sister. I own you. <laughs> Douglas Ahmad St. Martin. I am smarter and more mature at 14 than you're gonna be at 30. <laughs> and my nitwit older brother is not gonna tell me where I can go and who I can see. Now get out of my way unless you wanna get punched. You're fine. I'll get out of your way. You don't have to be punching anybody. I don't need your information anyway. And why is that? Because Malcolm will tell me what's going on when I speak to him tomorrow. I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> oh. oh, big surprise. <laughs> And Sharon? I know it's hard to believe, but she never lied to my parents before, so something must be going on. Yeah, but Malcolm and Sharon? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, it's really not that strange. I mean, Malcolm's a senior, and Sharon's a freshman. And seniors and freshmen go out all the time. Yeah, but Malcolm and Sharon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, for Malcolm to be going out with Sharon, he'd have to be the most desperate guy in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble. Trouble. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Uh, Malcolm, are uh, you seeing any interesting sisters lately? <laughs> what? What Doug's asking is if you're seeing anybody new. No. What about, oh, I don't know, uh, Sharon? <laughs> what about her? But well, we were wondering why you and her were alone yesterday after school in your apartment. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, come on, Malcolm. Ponzi saw her going into your building and she wasn't babysitting, so what's the deal? Did you ask Sharon about yesterday? Yeah, I asked her. She told me to mind my own business. Well, now, I think she makes a lot of sense. Why don't you take her advice? No, no, no. Why don't you take my advice and tell me what's going on right now? Hey, guys, do I feel a little tension here, or is it just me? You don't trust me with your little sister. Maybe I don't. Yo, forget you. Forget you. And forget my sister, too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's just me. you here. Somebody offers me a free pizza, I'm here. Well, it's the least I can do for somebody who helped me get my first ever B in algebra. Malcolm, congratulations. Hey, you helped me, so congratulations to you for being such a good tutor. Well, I have good news, too, and you helped me. Yeah? What? John Dinwiddie had band practice after school, so I went to his house. So does Mom tell you who X is? She didn't have to. As soon as I got near her, I smelled that expensive perfume. So X is after his mother, too? <laughs> X is his mother. You know, Malcolm, you're a genius. Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> if you hadn't had that good idea, I'd still be sniffing every girl in the ninth grade. <laughs> well, I guess I did you a big favor, huh? Yep, we're even. In that case, your end of the pizza comes to 425. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't know that if it wasn't for me. <laughs> And thanks for not making that public. You're welcome. <laughs> Look, we've known Malcolm all our lives, and he's known Sharon since she was a little brat. He's not going after Sharon. Well, how do you know that for sure? I don't know that for sure, but if he told you he isn't, and you're his friend, you should believe him. Maybe you're right. Malcolm and Sharon are having peace and holding hands. Love is bloomed, and I'm doomed. <laughs> I'm trying to have a dialogue with you idiots. Now, occasionally it becomes the duty of the firstborn to tell his parents something that they're not going to want to hear about the secondborn. <laughs> like they should have realized once they had me, they used up all the good chromosomes. <laughs> and the leftovers could only produce a lower life form like a goose. I'm sorry, Marie. They were all too hard or too soft. James, we have got to get a new mattress. The one we've got is so old. We conceived Doug on that mattress. <laughs> ah, yes. The lucky mattress. <laughs> Mom, Dad, we have a problem. And for once, it's not me, it's Sharon. What you blaming her for now? You know how you always say Sharon's a good girl, you never have to worry about her? Uh-huh. Stop saying that. <laughs> Doug, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say Sharon 
and Malcolm. You heard it here first. Sharon and Malcolm? That's a pretty serious allegation. Well, I'm a pretty serious alligator. <laughs> Sharon, would you come in here, please? This can't possibly be true. That's what Madonna's father said before he got his book of the month. <laughs> yes? Sharon, your brother believes there's something that you might want to tell your father and me. <laughs> no, there isn't. No. Tell them that you have been sneaking over Malcolm's house for hours at a time when his grandmother wasn't home. Tell them. <laughs> Sharon, is this true? I didn't sneak, I just went. Oh, she doesn't even have the decency to lie. <laughs> and you and Malcolm were alone? Yes. Alone together? Ah! <laughs> Sharon, what were the two of you doing alone together for so long? I'd rather not say. No, oh, of course she'd rather not say. She'd rather not see her mother have a stroke. <laughs> Sharon, I think you owe us an explanation. I think you better go sit in your room until you're ready to tell us what is going on. Hmm? And what does Malcolm have to say about all this? None of your business. What? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what he told me. I had the same reaction. Well, Sharon's going to be restricted to school and to her room until she decides to tell us what's going on. Yep. Yep. This hurts us more than it hurts her. But I say we take the pain and let her rot. No. If you're looking for Sharon, she's in solitary. At least that way she'll be safe from you. I'm here to talk. Oh, I don't have anything to say to you. That's cool, because I'm here to talk to your folks. <laughs> Come in, Malcolm. I know Sharon's in trouble, and I know it's because of me. I just want to let y'all know what's been going on so Sharon won't be in trouble anymore. Good luck. <laughs> I don't have any parents of my own, so I don't know how these little family talks are supposed to go. Just wing it. <laughs> if I flunk out of algebra, they're not going to let me graduate high school. Now, I've been shown recently that I really need that diploma, but I don't think I could stay another year to get it. Sharon's been tutoring me. And I asked her not to say anything because I'm real tired of teachers and friends thinking I'm not as smart as I know I am. Malcolm. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Why did you have her over when your grandmother wasn't home? I, I didn't even think about it, Mr. St. Martin. I mean, it wasn't like a date or anything. I've known Sharon since she was born. I didn't think we needed a chaperone. Malcolm. I'm not talking to you. <clears throat> Douglas said you invited her to dinner. <laughs> I bought her a pizza. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm seeing the possibility of pulling off a C or maybe even a B in a class I thought I was going to fail. And Sharon is the person to thank for that. I just wanted to thank her. Sorry if I caused any trouble. But Malcolm, he's, he's not, not talking, talking to you. <laughs> no, now I'm talking to him. You're lucky to have Sharon for a sister. <laughs> oh, sure, a little bit of the truth, and now she's off the hook? <laughs> Sharon, would you come in here, please? I never doubted her for a moment. <laughs> you wanted to talk to me? Malcolm was here. He was? He told us what was going on. You don't have to stay in your room anymore. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you, but I made a promise to Malcolm. Sharon, you made a promise to a friend and you kept it. We're very proud of you for that. But I hope you know that you can always talk to us about anything. There's nothing more important than communication in this family. I was afraid if I told you, you'd tell Doug. We don't talk to Doug. There's
there's a small faction of society that believes I'm lucky to have you for a sister. Psst. If you're gonna make fun of me, I'm leaving. Sit, darling. <laughs> you're not gonna want to miss this. This is only gonna happen about once in your life. What? Sharon, I'm sorry. Well, you ought to be. You caused Malcolm a lot of grief. I know, I know, and I know I caused you a lot of grief when you were trying to do something special for somebody I care about. Doug, you've been causing me grief for so long, I stopped thinking about it. <laughs> and then when Malcolm started showing me a little respect, I liked it. Yeah? Count on a friend to ruin a perfectly good sibling rivalry. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't kill you just to show me a little respect. Oh, Malcolm wasn't respecting you. He was just using you for your brain. <laughs> Well, that explains why he didn't come to you, Doug. Sharon, uh, I got nothing against your brain. You got a great brain. It's just in such an ugly container. <laughs> oh. Well, is that your face or is that Heavy D's butt? Pretty good, Sharon, pretty good. Wanna go for some pizza? Yeah, okay. Wanna hit me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, if I sit with you, it's a free stoop. Malcolm, if you needed help in algebra, how come you didn't come to your friends? It was just easier going to Sharon. She didn't make me feel stupid. And she didn't break a promise about not telling anybody. Even when she got in trouble. So I guess she was a better friend to you than I am. Yeah, and she was a cheap date. She hardly ate any of the pizza. Oh, she was just trying to be polite because she was with you. That girl can swallow a whole chicken when she wants. Want to be friends again? Yeah. I got no standards whatsoever. <laughs> Wanna hit me? <laughs> I learned that from your sister, too. <laughs> you are one dead cradle robber. You got nothing to worry about, Kwanzi. She broke up with me. She did? Yeah, you wanna know who she's after now? Who? Yeah, what's up, guys? Reggie. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.